Hello everyone, Migs here again with another video tutorial. Today we're going to look at adjusting the game's game data SII file. This is to improve the visual aspect you get when driving your truck from within the cab view. It entails the immediate environment and the impact it has on your frame speed, which includes your mirror field of views and the vegetation drawing distances. Then we'll also tackle adjusting your truck's speed limiter as well as adjusting the blinker or indicator stalks rotation limits for example when your indicators switch off after exiting the roundabout and if you're not happy with your escort speed during your special transport delivery we'll address that too so if you guys are ready let's begin uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my channel uh, i would suggest you click on the link below it's a video to show you how to do the the setup for the my mods folder if you've done it before you obviously know the drill we're going to dive right in so you'll open up the my mods folder let's move it in here and from the last video you know we did the cameras today we're going to do we're going to focus and put emphasis on the game file the game data file at least sorry uh let's open up the base folder let's move this down and you will look going to the def folder here we're going to look for two files it's the environmental uh, environmental data so right click copy move it here uh, not move copy copy into your my mods folder and then the other one is the game data where are you there we go right click copy here good you can close this one we're done so now we have to open up notepad there we go let's open up the environmental data let's get that one out of the way basically this one I've played around with this one. You can see lamps on elevation. It's at five. What I noticed while you were driving, especially when the light starts coming back during the night drive, you'll notice that the street lamps suddenly go off and it's still dark. So for me, the realism there was a bit out. I've played around with a few numbers and the best number I got for the lights to switch off as it's bright enough, you know, that you don't get that sudden drop in, in, in ambient light was to change that to 15 okay obviously i run in the summer solstice the 172 if you if you do if you run it in the winter one you'll obviously that will, will be changed so you would basically half that that's what i've done or you could take it all the way down to zero this goes all the way up to 365 uh, so it's basically uh, the number of days in the year and that's that for this file so you can save it and we're done with that one let's now open up the game data file this is the big one so we're going to look at a couple of things here. A few things that, this is all preferential. Like I said before, everything you do here is all up to what you prefer at the game to do for you. Uh, when it comes to sound volume and pitch and all those kind of things, I was very particular about how, I, from my videos, you've noticed that I run with the open pipe on my Scania. I love the sound of it. And, but it's overbearing when you're in the cab when it's too loud and sometimes the turbo noise and that so you'll adjust all those things on your slider scale within your game within the euro track game itself there's sliders where you can adjust all the sounds and the volumes and all that but the interior sound volume i've set the default uh, it's currently at set to 0.5 which is very very soft you hardly hear the motor and it's pointless driving a truck around you don't hear anything okay so mine is set to 0.6 so that one I've got adjusted to six and the interior sound pitch, uh, that's the, f if I understand correctly, the, the frequency, I'm not a sound expert, but playing with the values, this is what I got it to, to sound like. I changed mine to 99, so I almost went to a full scale there, right? You can play around with these figures. Um, like I said, I'm not a sound expert, but those are what worked for me. And I must also say that's based on my open pipe uh, mod that I have for my Scania um so that covers the sound section this is a big one for me blinker auto off limit um what was very frustrating for me after you've left a roundabout or you've made a right turn the indicator or blinker remained on you had to physically switch it off and that frustrated me so i got the the the, the values the the degrees i changed the off limit to 10 and the auto trigger i left it at the same at five percent so basically the auto limit off will as soon as you've reached a limit of ten percent on the return it will switch off so if you're at zero and you switch on your indicator you do a right 
turn, you're basically going to clock your wheel a quarter of the way around, so let's say 90 degrees. It will trigger, once it comes back, at 10%, it will switch off. And then the trigger is at 5%. So that's a self-explanatory play with those numbers you will see what feels good for you this is what feels good for me 10 percent is my is my max anything higher than that i have to manually switch off the indicator every time or the blinker uh, moving on hud bright attenuation start as it says it starts hud brightness attenuation at nine i've changed mine to 1440 which starts a bit later okay again this is preferential you can adjust it not that it's going to have a huge impact on your game, but you'll see that the fade of the light will have a bit of a difference. So play around with that if it appeals to you. If it doesn't, just leave it the way it is. It is fine the way it is. It just, I, yeah, I wanted to play around and see what I could get out of it. So I changed mine to 1440. So that's basically at 11. So it gave me a bit more daylight, or it didn't give me that darkness immediately. That's Next one we're going to tackle is the field of view. Originally, SCS had this at 32. Those were the original amounts uh, or values for the field of view on your mirrors. These are your side mirrors. So the close mirror, the small mirror, the far mirror, small, the far small mirror, and then your side and front mirror. These are all the fields of view you get for those mirrors. I still found it a bit off, so I've changed it to 50. But you must also keep in mind, each truck mirrors are different. If you take, I'm going to speak about the Scania now. The Scania Streamline versus the Scania S, the Streamline's mirrors are much bigger and more of an oval shape rather than the, the S, which has a more rectangular shape. So you just got to play around with it and see what works for you. And this is now on the close mirror. Uh, the close small mirror, that's the one just above. So that's basically the the... the the close-up where you can see down at the, uh, towards your blind spot. That one I left. That one was fine. Uh, then the field of view for the far mirror, I would change that the same because that's your the far mirror. You're going to obviously keep it the same as your close mirror. The far small mirror is the same as the close small mirror. I left that the same. You can play around with those. The higher you go in this number, the more field of view you're going to get. So the more bubble you're going to get in your mirror, basically. Then your side mirror. This is the one that gives you the off your passenger door, looking down at the wheel. That's the one that this one will affect. You can, I've changed mine to 80. Give me a bit more view. And then my, okay, that was that one. Then my front mirror, I've changed that to 120. Just to open up the view a bit. Uh, I think that covers the mirrors. Good. Right, now I've got some little tidbits for you. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. Use truck odometer. If you're buying use trucks or, you know, if you don't want them to be as used or you want them to have a bit more mileage on them so your damage and wear, obviously that's not going to be effective because in the previous video I showed you how to mitigate that. But if you don't want to alter the damage values, you can always change this and make your trucks a bit newer. So you don't have to have it at 500,000. You can have it at 200,000 for example so you can buy a truck at the same value but with less mileage on it so you should get better wear rates on your motor if that's uh, reasonable to think and then the maximum you can leave it at 600 you can change that to a million you can do whatever you like i've left mine at 600 and i've changed that one to 200 and this is where i'm gonna give you guys a little tip the truck speed limiter I think by default it's set at 95 in your truck and there's no way you can adjust it the only thing you can do is in game is to switch it on or off uh, so if you want your limiter at 90 uh, at 90 or at 100 you you have to go in game you set the limiter on you'll only do 95 so you're stuck there for you to go through that you've got to switch it off which means you can then accelerate 250 if your motor can handle it i have come up with another one i'm going to add this in here it's called truck speed limit Let's put that in there. Type that in into your game data file. And then you put in the value that you like. I've got mine set to 115. Right? So you can set your limit to 100. You can set it to 100, 150. You can set it to 1,000. If your truck can do it, it will, that's where the limit will be. That's if you want to run with the limiter on. What I like to do is, uh, like I've explained before, I like to drive around the 95 mark. Sometimes you get to a downhill where you've got a bit of load on the back and the truck will accelerate. 
obviously you'll hit speeds of 100, 105, 110. And sometimes to perform a uh, overtake, you need to, you know, you need to put the hammer down. And you can do speeds of 120, 150. So with this truck speed limiter in place, I can now stop myself from getting carried away. So once I hit that 115, you know, the limiter kicks in, still gives you enough speed to get, get by the traffic, but it keeps the game within reason. Okay, so that's why I like the 115 and not the 95. And uh, let me see what else we got here. Okay, this is a big one. You, um, your vegetation, your LOD, that's got to do with uh, distance and when your um, graphics become more detailed. So this is your high definition ranges. And this has got to do with vegetation only. So in, I picked this up from when I was downloading a Pro, ProMods uh, map. I did some editing in the ProMods as well. And I picked up that the draw distances, because when you download ProMods, you obviously got to download or generate a def file. And in the def file, some of the parameters there are set for uh, close drawing, uh, standard, far, and ultra. So I think something like that. And that gets that's where these values get affected. So what I'm going to do is, these are the default values. So the 240 to 300, that's minimum and maximum. Uh, as it says here, first load, uh, LOD is for trees, second one is for, for, for the grass. The third one, I assume, is shade, the shading of the trees, shadows, that kind of thing. I've not played with that because I haven't had the need for it, and I don't see a difference in the game, so I haven't really explored this third value. But I know the first one is for, for the trees, and the second one is for grass. It's, and if you like running high detail in your vegetation, this will have an impact. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to just... Keep in mind that the defaults will now appear in second place. Control V. Okay, let's go and have a look at this. And I'm just going to open this up a bit more so we can see what's going on. Right. So over here, this section here, sorry, this section, and this section here, those are your defaults. Okay. This is for your standard draw. If you want to make it a closer drawing distance where your detail becomes more visible at a shorter distance, rather than the far distance. So you're going to have less resources requirement for your graphics. These are the values you're going to use. You'll notice that the first values remain the same. I focused on the grass. Because trees really, the LOD factors don't really impact that much on, on far. It's basically blocky. So it doesn't really have too much detail. But your grass does. So I've dropped those figures to 260 and 310. Currently, the game is set at 410 and 460. And then for your high and your ultra, these are your ultra values, you can play with these ones. So if you've got a really high-end PC with a good graphics card, try these numbers. You, you'll see that you'll get good, good, good resolution. But if you don't, if you're not that fortunate, or if you just haven't had the means to, to upgrade your system yet, I would suggest using this one. I run a decent-sized system. Uh, and even so, with this 260, I still get very good um, definition, resolution. As you can see from the videos that I've posted already, there's nothing wrong with my the way my game uh, comes up. So you can really play around with these ones and see what works for you. And I think that is the lot of it. Uh, Rain cube strength, you can. The defaults used to be 0.16. I see it's changed now to 0.5. So they've also obviously played around with what how it looks like on the screen because this is where you would change it, the cube strength, the planar strength, and the you know, specular. If you're brave enough, or if you feel uh, you you can uh, change that a bit, go for it. Uh, it's not going to break your game. It's just going to change the way the, the screen's going to look when the when when the rain's falling on it. I've had it where it's basically you can't see anything through, and if, if that's what you like, well, by all means, knock yourself out. This is where you change it. And guys, yeah, that's the end of this video. I'm trying to keep them as short as possible. If you like what you see, uh, hit that su subscribe button. If you have comments, which I've been receiving a few, thank you very much to those guys. Uh, it's appreciated, and I respond to every single one. Keep them coming, and if you have uh, uh, opinions or you know suggestions, let me know. Put them in the comments below. We'll have a look at it, and we'll address them. Anyway, thanks for watching this one. Look out for the next one. It's coming. Thanks, guys.